Sweden has drawn first blood in their playoffs against the Italian national side. Could we see a World Cup without Italy, the four-time World Cup champions? Netherlands has already missed out. Chile has already missed out. My U.S. team missed out. Could we see Italy not qualify for the World Cup? They need to turn things around next week in Milan in the second leg. Thankfully for them, they only have a one-goal loss to turn around. But they need to be careful because should they win by one goal next week, but Sweden happens to get on the score sheet, Sweden will qualify via the away goals rule. So, uh, Sweden has more ground to, uh, Italy has more ground to make up than it seems, but it's not the end of the world. It's not the worst case scenario, but they are in a really uh, bad spot at the moment. Could we see something like a France-Ukraine type situation that we saw four years ago in the playoffs between Ukraine and France? I don't want to give a prediction for the second leg yet. That'll come maybe in a couple days. Um, I did get the opportunity to watch this match. Uh, not all of it, but about 75% of it. I thought Sweden started off really strongly in the opening half an hour. Uh, Ola Toivonen looked like he was really on fire. I liked how Sweden approached to this game. They were very aggressive, especially they were uh, in midfield. I thought they were winning the ball in all those tight spaces. Italy, it took them a while for them to grow into the game gradually, but once they did, the tempo sort of died off for a little bit, but then it went up again in the second half, um, and this game became much more exciting than the Northern Ireland to Switzerland first leg yesterday uh, in Belfast. And I'm so glad that I tuned into this match because really the last 20, 25 minutes uh, were, it was really fun to watch. And Jakob Jakobsen, um, no, excuse me, Jakob Johansson for Sweden, getting a goal for them uh, off a of deflection, a little bit lucky, but it, it was hardly undeserved uh, from Sweden's stand, standpoint. And then Darmian hitting the post for Italy just a few moments afterwards. I was on the edge of my seat. Uh, because I was really th expecting, I was thinking Italy would, would, would pull one back and they would come back into this, get the 1-1 one, one draw. I predicted this would be a 1-1 one, one draw, um, but Italy just couldn't do it. I, th I really thought they were going to claw some kind of result out of this match, but Sweden held on. Uh, but when Darmian hit the post, uh, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. We were in for a really, really astonishing um, thrill, thrilling uh, last few minutes of this match. And I loved when when, when Johansson scored, how the whole stadium erupted. You could tell how much it meant to them. Beating Italy is no small feat. Italy were the favorites heading into this playoff um, through name recognition alone. But look, look, uh, like, like I said before, like a week or so ago, um, I said that this playoff would be just as difficult for Italy as it is for Sweden. And I even named Sweden as the very, very slight favorite in this playoffs on current form. Now, pedigree and, and, and uh, being a big name in, in, the, in this sport that Italy is, a lot of people went with them. And... I did predict Italy to ultimately qualify for the World Cup. Whether or not I still do, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to wait a couple days. Uh, for, you know, like I said, the prediction for the second leg. But I, I, said, I pretty much said this, this playoff was a coin toss. And lo and behold, 
Sweden is just just as dangerous as Italy are at the moment, especially Italy with coach Ventura. I looked at all the post-match uh, press conferences and the interviews. He's already making a lot of excuses, saying Italy deserved a result from this match. Uh, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. I can understand why a lot of Italian soccer fans are really frustrated with him and they want to get rid of him. Um, will he be gone before the second leg? Who knows? Is that too soon to sack a manager in between two legs of a playoff to get you to the World Cup? Probably, but, you know, uh, I, I'm sure the Italian media is um, really worried right now. And there's going to be a lot of questions raised. There's going to be a lot of criticism. There's going to be a lot of hammering toward the players, to the staff, to the coach. Uh, but this was never going to be straightforward. I said this was going to be the tightest of all the playoffs. And it's it looks it's looking like it could shape up to be that way. But like I said, Italy is still alive. They only lost one zero. Uh, if they win one zero next week, then it goes to extra time and if necessary penalties. But you know, it's 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 very doable from from their standpoint. So it's not like an end of the world type scenario for Italy just yet. But they would have been much better off if they had gotten some kind of result here today. Also, for Sweden, well done. We could see Sweden return to the World Cup for the first time since 2006. I think it would be a wonderful addition to the tournament. Uh, Sweden very much a second-tier European team. And look, Sweden looks as good as ever without Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, elsewhere, uh, in Africa, as I mentioned earlier today, Senegal qualified with a 2-0 road victory away to South Africa. With a game to spare, they top their group five points clear of second place to Burkina Faso. Um, but elsewhere in Africa, we had Algeria against Nigeria. Algeria playing for compensation. Nigeria already very much qualified. That game ended in a 1-1 draw, as I predicted that it would. Um, Nigeria finished... This qualifying campaign undefeated. They have they did not lose a single match, which is pretty incredible considering they were in a group this difficult with Algeria and Cameroon, two other previous World Cup uh, um, participants, uh, as well as an up and coming, really strong young Zambian team. So this was a very difficult group with three African representatives at the last two consecutive World Cups, and Nigeria didn't lose a single game. Pretty incredible. They won four, they drew two, and they were leading in this match uh, up all the way up until the 80-something minute when Algeria leveled it through a penalty. They could have uh, won five games out of six, which, for, uh, which is a, it really, uh, that's, a, that's a great feat. Um, so Nigeria, congratulations for remaining professional and trying to win this match. You almost did. They could have just sent a, a reserve squad. They could have just not cared, but they played to win. I respect that. And Algeria, two points out of a possible 18 is inexcusable for a team as, as richly talented, uh, at the club level, uh, as Algeria uh, are. They had players playing abroad in Europe and France as well in the domestic league and also in the Tunisian league as well. Um, so really disappointing qualifying campaign from them. And then elsewhere today, I believe we had Honduras versus Australia in the first leg of the international playoff between CONCACAF and Asia. That match ended in a 0-0 draw, which was a, my exact prediction. So I'm pretty happy with that. I predicted that would be a 0-0 draw. Australia very much was the better team. They had so many opportunities come their way uh, through Rogic uh, and Cruza, And I just thought that they really should have won this game. The way they played, they really should have won this game. Um, Honduras was on the back foot for large stretches of the 90 minutes. Playing at home in San Pedro Sula, very intimidating atmosphere. So this is a great result for Australia. But they need to be careful when they go home next week because 
Another draw that includes goals, we'll see Honduras go through on the away goals rule. So Australia put in arguably their best performance, uh, one of their best performance of the, their entire 2018 World Cup qualifying uh, campaign. Uh, they really should have gotten the, uh, oh, I'm almost at three points. There, there, no, there are no points in playoffs, but uh, they really should have won this match. I saw a lot of the highlights. They created an ample amount of opportunities, much more than Honduras did. They just couldn't find the back of that. They could, they could not put away their opportunities. And that might come back to bite them, but they do have a home advantage now playing next week in Sydney. They got the job done here, at least. So those are much more reactions. Uh, tomorrow we have more games. The Republic of Ireland plays against Denmark. I already got my Ireland shirt on, so I'm rooting for the Republic of Ireland. Hope that they can get a result in Copenhagen tomorrow. Um, that's about all for tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, God willing. Until then, uh, have a good night. Much love and peace out.